So what we're going to do now is talk about how to do multi-group structural equation modeling, specifically invariance analyses, using the Onyx platform. This is a little bit easier to do if I just show it to you rather than try to say it to you in words. So that's what we're going to do. So I kind of like to play around with my doctoral hood. It doesn't get much use, you know, and I can say these are not the invariance models you're looking for. But here we go. Let's share the screen. And what you're seeing here is a data set on the left, which consists of the items that are in the book. And I'm going to pick the first five items here. And I'm going to drag these over to this part of the group. And what you'll see is this model is now a structural equation model. I don't have any means in the model yet. It just says I have five items on my reasons for drinking scale that I want to look at in terms of invariance. So to do our model, we're going to fit a single model to this, a single factor model. Here's our latent variable. We can call this maybe reasons for drinking. And I can come downstairs and fix this to the number one. For identification purposes, and then come downstairs and specify all of my factor loadings by left clicking and dragging to the manifest variables. I can hold the shift key down and the right click button and select all of those. And and what you'll see is that Onyx is going to give some names to these. Because it gets a little cluttered, I'm going to call these L1 through L5 for stand for loading one through loading five. Let me move this down to make everything nice and tidy. <clears throat> now, in order to do an invariance analysis, I'm also going to put the mean in the model. So I'm going to include my constant, put that over here, and then drag paths down to each of the manifest variables. And just as before, we will select all of those paths and we will free them all. And as before, I'm going to give those some names. So, you know, maybe new is the name I want to give to the intercepts. Let me just say, call them N1 through N5 in this particular example. N3. N4 and N5. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to drag these around so we can see them a little bit better. I can maybe move this over here a little bit so we can see our loadings there. I can maybe move the paths here so that they're up and not conflicting too much with the intercepts that I have here. So what I now have is an identified model. It has the factor variance fixed at one and freely estimated intercepts. Downstairs, I have all of my error variances. So to do the invariance analysis, I need to add a grouping variable. So I'm going to select all of my manifest variables here and right click and say, add a grouping variable. Okay. And now what I want to do is to say what the grouping variable is going to be. So on this data set, I have sex measured at wave zero. I'm going to drag the sex variable over onto all of these five variables. Then I can come inside here and say, this is going to be all of the people who have a one on sex. Okay. 
So to do the same thing for the women, I'm going to copy this and come down here and paste it. Now you see down here, I have exactly the same model as before. I'm going to do the same thing as I did before to tell the program which variable is my grouping variable. It's probably good to also come in here and get rid of these little single parens after the names of each of the variables so that the computer knows exactly which variables I want to have. You can do it this way, or you can come in and you can drag these variables over. Accomplishes the same thing. So one keys for the men and the number two keys for the women. So I need to come back in here and change all of those ones to twos. And here we have our first model. All of the loadings, all of the intercepts, and all of the error variances are different for the men and for the women. If we come down here, probably this model has not yet run, but we can show our estimate summary, and we can see that it's actually processing things. Probably as I'm looking at this, it does not yet have a converged solution, but it's cooking on that. So we're going to let that do that for a while. Let's save this particular model. Let's give it a name and say it is our variant model. And then we'll save that to a file. And let's just call it variant model. Okay, next thing. Now we'll take the same model and we'll impose some equality constraints. So inside of the book, for example, we looked at the possibility that the intercepts are invariant across men and women, but that the factor variance is different for women and the factor mean is different for women. And the loadings are invariant, but the error variances are free to vary. So to take this model, let's maybe one easiest way is to save this model as loading invariant on XML. And we'll give this a name. We'll say it is loading and INT are invariant. And we'll come downstairs now and we'll impose those constraints. That is, we'll remove a little sick tick mark here and we'll change loading one and loading two and loading three to all be the same as they were in the men. Maybe to make things a little clearer, we will call this reasons for drinking male. And down here, we'll call this reasons for drinking female. And I can make that a little bit larger so that we can see these things. Okay. Now, in order for us to have the means and variances be different, we need to have one of these groups be mathematically specified. So in this case, the mean and the variant, the mean of the reasons for drinking male and the is six to zero, and the variance is six to one. Downstairs for the women, I can specify that there's a mean for the women, and that is free. And for purposes of tidiness, let's just call this the letter A. And downstairs, we will allow the variance to be free. Right. 
Okay, so here we have a model. And, you know, as before, if I'm showing the estimate summary, this thing probably has not actually converged yet. While that's cooking, let's go back upstairs and bring up our other model. That is our variant model. And put that over here. And for good measure, we might send the data to our variant model just to make sure that it's cooking as well. And to compare these two models, I then hit the shift key, left click, and drag from one model to the other. And this little dot in here gives me the likelihood ratio test between these two models. So let's pause things for just a little bit here. Okay, a little bit of time has passed, and we see that we have some converged values here for the loading and intercept invariant model. And over here, we see that we have some convergence here for our absolutely everything is variant model. Therefore, we can get a little more confident of the degrees of freedom in the model. It shows me over that little black dot a minus two log likelihood ratio of 2904 with eight degrees of freedom and a p value at 000312. So this model fits appreciably worse by a likelihood ratio test than the completely variant model. But this illustrates the way that you can compare the models. Um, it's not possible in Onyx as of yet to take this script over here and then export it to either M plus or Levon. You'll have to write those out in Levon longhand or in M plus longhand the way I've shown you in class. And similar invariance models can then be made for the other variables as well. As you'll see here, the model on the left replicates the values that you see in the book. I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.